something is happening. Um,
Hello everyone, my name is Jarrett Krasoska and welcome to my art studio. Uh, this is the Sketchathon. It's something I've been doing uh, for I think three years now to raise money for a scholarship that I have had for about a decade now. It's called the Joseph and Shirley Krasoska Memorial Youth Scholarships at the Worcester Art Museum. And Worcester is a city where I grew up and I took a lot of classes there when I was a kid. And so to remember my grandparents and all they did for me, I wanted to give back to my hometown by raising money to get kids to be able to take classes uh, for free. Uh, and perhaps kids who are also being raised by their grandparents as I was. So I'm going to, we're gonna have, we're gonna be here for five hours drawing. I'm joined here by my studio assistant, Sam, and she might be coming in sometimes to, to step in and draw for me. Um, but I'm going to draw a bunch. I have some books that I'd like to recommend to you as well. I'm also going to read some books. Um, but why don't I start today by just doing some warm-up sketches. You know, when you start your, your day at your studio, you want to just kind of loosen up some. And so I am going to um, draw for you. I'm going to make some quick sketches. Now, everything that I draw will end up on eBay and the proceeds from those sales will benefit the scholarship. All right, where is my paper? Okay, so I am streaming both live on, on Facebook and on YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook, you're just going to see my desk. If you're watching on YouTube, I have a device that I can switch between different camera angles. So if, I'm, if you're catching me on Facebook, you might wanna head over to uh, Studio JJK on YouTube Okay, so I am uh, going to start by doing a warm-up sketch of Lunch Lady. You might know the Lunch Lady character from these graphic novels. There are 10 of them. There's also some Lunch Lady mini-comics in a series that I co-edited called Comic Squad. And so when I'm, when I'm drawing any of my characters, the very first thing that I do is I draw just a couple of shapes. And the very, so for Lunch Lady, I would draw an upside down teardrop. It's the very first thing that I draw. And then I sketch out a regular ended teardrop. And that will represent the character's head and then their torso. Then I'll figure out where the character's uh, legs will go and where the character's arms will go. And this is called a gesture sketch. It's just a very quick, loose sketch where I'm just trying to sort out uh, the pose of the character. And I do this in order to just very quickly see if uh, I'm making uh, any mistakes. So I have to figure out what the character's head is in proportion to their body. So in this instance, I'm thinking, you know what, her head looks a little bit too long. So I'm gonna shorten it right there. And it's significantly easier for me to make some adjustments when I'm just drawing these shapes versus if I was drawing all of the details of the character. I come in and erase that. Now on top of this gesture sketch, I'm going to now draw the details of the character. So if I'm happy with, um, I'm happy with how everything is fitting together, I'm going to draw out the character's uh, facial features and their hair and their, their clothes. Now on top of that, I might, I might draw some more, more details. And next step, typically I'm going to ink, but like I said, this is, this is just a warm up sketch. So I'm going to come in with just some heavier graphite lines there. And 
And as the day goes on, I'm going to be adding some, some, I'll be making more elaborate pieces. So I might draw lunch lady again, but I'll probably paint her. I'll probably draw up, you know, uh, more detail and I'm going to add some color. And so this, you know, having a little warm-up sketch of something that if you're just having fun drawing, it just loosens you up, gets you ready for the day. And I'll sign this. And here I have the first item that I uh, will put up for auction. So um, my eBay username, let's see if I can put up right here, is Studio JJK. So Sam, I'm gonna hand this over to you. Uh, and it's just a quick sketch, so we'll maybe put a starting bid of $10 for that one. Um, and also, I'm going to be uh, taking your questions today via Twitter. So I'm gonna I'm going to be signing on to Twitter on my iPad here, and if you have any questions for me, uh, let me know uh, your first name and where in the country you're watching, uh, and I will get to some questions. So I'm gonna do some more um, drawing for now, and then I'll log on to Twitter later to to take some questions from you. Okay, I'm gonna make another warm up sketch here. All right, so I've been having a lot of fun with another series of books uh, for, for Jedi Academy. This is a copy of Jedi Academy that I had on hand while I was writing some of the follow-up sequels. So I have uh, some post-it notes marked for some, some pieces that I wanted to pay attention to when I was uh, making the, the follow-up books. And I will draw uh, a quick warm-up sketch of of Yoda for you. And, you know, such an honor to be able to uh, use this character and to uh, write lines for this character. And when I'm drawing Yoda, the very first thing I do is I draw sort of an, an oval on its side, like so. And then I draw a bell shape. And that is the very basis of how I decided to draw Yoda. One thing that I really loved is that Lucasfilm and Scholastic entrusted me in drawing this character in my own, in my own style, coming up with my own ter interpretation of, of how I would draw this iconic character from Star Wars. So I have that oval on its side, and then I have a bell shape. And again, I'll sort of where the character's limbs will go, where their legs and arms will go. I'm going to draw Yoda holding his cane. Figure where the eyes will go, where the nose will go, the facial features will go. And now once I'm happy with that quick loose sketch, um, I'm going to come in with some darker lines.
little shadow under there. And there we have Yoda. So again, if you are just tuning in uh, via Facebook, I only have one camera for Facebook, but I have multiple cameras for YouTube. Uh, and here we have a quick warm-up sketch of Yoda. So Sam, I'm going to hand this over to you so we can throw that up on eBay as well. Um, again, so if you're just tuning in, uh, we're raising money for the Joseph and Shirley Art Scholarships at the Worcester Art Museum. I'm Jared Krasowska. I'm here in my art studio in Northampton, Massachusetts, and I am just doing some warm-up sketches. I'm here for five hours, drawn live. Um, so let me grab uh, another piece of paper, and I'm going to make another uh, warm-up sketch for you. And again, uh, if you have questions, send them to me via Twitter. I have an iPad here and I am going to be logging on and looking at my mentions to see if anybody has any questions for me. If you do, uh, please tell me your first name and where you are watching. If you feel comfortable with that, you don't, you don't have to. You can just tell me where you're watching or not at all. Uh, okay, so let me make a little picture for the, the crowd who might know me for my picture books. I have a picture book called Punk Farm, and uh, this book was published, believe it or not, 14 years ago. It doesn't seem like it's been 14 years, but Punk Farm was published in 2005. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw, um, I'm going to draw a pig for you. So again, I start with just that, that major shape. And then I'll draw uh, another shape to represent the character's head and torso. And then I'll figure out where the, the limbs are going, where the, where the legs will go, where the arms will go. And Pig is, he plays the guitar, so I'm going to put that guitar right there. And sketch out where his fe facial features will go, the character's ears. There's sunglasses. So once I have a quick, again, that quick sketch, This is getting a little dull. I'm gonna come in here and sharpen it some. Oh, I don't have a bottom for my thing. <laughs> I made a total mess. That's okay. All right. All right. Now at least I have a sharpened pencil.
imagine Pig is just getting his feet a little bit off the ground as he's jumping and playing that guitar. And there we have Pig uh, from Punk Farm. So Sam, there's another sketch for the old eBay. Okay, so um, I'm going to see if I can answer some questions, but I am having trouble remembering my Twitter password um, on my iPad. This is, an, this is a second generation iPad that I haven't turned on in years. Um, I can't remember the password. Sam, may I borrow that laptop real quick to see if any questions came through through Twitter? Okay, thank you. All right. I know we have Twitter logged on here. Okay, so let me see if there are any questions for me on Twitter. Let's see. So one question... Um, Ask me if I use Procreate. Um, oh, Jonathan Ox here. Here's tuning in. Uh, very talented author and good pal of mine. Um, okay, so when you saw this, I'll show you. Uh, when you saw this on the intro, that was used uh, using Adobe Fresco. So I imported a photo of uh, a sketchbook and then... Uh, using Adobe Fresco, which is a, a new app, which I really love using. Uh, you can do a time-lapse video of, of what you've drawn. Okay, uh, my friend Jonathan is the only person who has asked a question yet via Twitter. So, okay, I'm going to go back to sketching. There you go, Sam, thank you. And, uh, okay, I'll do one more warm-up sketch, and then I'm going to... Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna take a break and read a book to you. And then I'll start adding, adding color and stuff. So, here's another character that I draw. The first shape I draw is this, but that's essentially the only shape this character has because this character is a jellyfish. And this is from my book, Peanut Butter and Jellyfish. And because of my uh, need to play on words, I named the seahorse Peanut Butter and Jellyfish Jellyfish. Not Jellyfish doesn't get a, a, his own name. Uh, and then if you've read the book, you know there's a bit of an antagonist in this crab named Krabby. Originally, this was uh, supposed to, was, I wanted Krabby to be a, uh, a lobster, and it was going to be a lobster named Krabby, uh, but uh, the folks over at the publisher thought that might confuse uh, very young kids, which they had a point, though I do like the absurdity of a lobster named Krabby. So you can also find an animated version of Peanut Butter and Jellyfish, which was produced by Weston Woods, and I narrate that as well. And um, you can find it on some different services like Vooks, if you have a subscription to Vooks, I believe it's on there. Um, it's also on iTunes as well for download. And you might want to check with your public library. They might have an institutional version of the DVD of the animation of Peanut Butter and Jellyfish.
going to draw the clam down here. If you've read Peanut Butter and Jellyfish, and if you're very eagle-eyed, you know that there's a character whose story is only told through the art, and there's this little clam that turns up. And what we as adults forget to do is oftentimes adults forget to read the pictures as carefully as we're reading the words. However, young readers, kids, they always know to take a moment and read the pictures because they know there's a part of the story that's right there being told for them. Okay, so a quick little warm-up sketch of peanut butter and jellyfish. Here you go, Sam. We'll throw that right up on eBay as well to benefit the art scholarships that I have in my grandparents' memory at the Worcester Art Museum. And, and everything that, that comes from those, uh, those eBay bids, uh, that, the, the winnings, uh, whoever gets top bidder, all of that money is going to go towards the Joseph and Shirley Art Scholarship. So I would like to take a brief pause. And I'll, since I've been talking so much about peanut butter and jellyfish, I will, um, I will go ahead and read the book to you as well. Let me just take a quick drink here. Wet my whistle. Peanut butter and jellyfish. Now remember, I talked about how the pictures tell the story as well. And for curious readers, if you were to look under this front flap, you have a little piece of foreshadowing there, hidden right underneath that flap. A lobster trap is getting thrown off the back of a boat. Peanut butter and jellyfish. Peanut butter and jellyfish were the best of friends. Best of friends who spent their days exploring up, down, around, and through their grand ocean home. Unluckily for them, though, they live near Krabby. You guys swim like humans, he would taunt as they slipped past. Peanut butter and jellyfish did their best to ignore the heckler. Did you hear something? asked Jellyfish. No, must be the current, said Peanut Butter. Krabby was relentless. You guys smell like rotten barnacles, P.U. I've seen sea snails swim with more style. My grandma called. She wants her run walk shoes back. What a bunch of bubbleheads. Jellyfish puffed up his chest and said, Driftwood and sea stones may break our bones, but words will never hurt us. You're an invertebrate. You don't even have any bones, huffed Krabby as he marched along his favorite rock by himself. One day, as Peanut Butter and Jellyfish set out on an excursion to the Great Reef, they swam past Krabby's perch. They braced themselves for the usual insults, but all was quiet. Then they heard the faint sound of sobbing up ahead. It was Krabby. He was caught in a lobster trap and it was being lifted to the surface. I'm scared, he cried. Surely he was doomed. Should we help? asked Jellyfish. The two friends shared a look. He is in serious trouble, said Peanut Butter. You're right. We have to help, exclaimed Jellyfish. But how? 
I have a plan, said Peanut Butter. Follow me. They swam up to the lobster trap. Peanut Butter used his tail to unlock the trap's gate, but Krabby didn't budge. Come on, you're free, said Peanut Butter. But, but I can't swim, confessed Krabby. And I'm afraid of heights. The lobster trap was getting pulled closer to the surface. Plan B, exclaimed Jellyfish. He worked furiously on untying the trap's knot. Hurry, cried Peanut Butter. I can see the fishermen above. Just when all hope was lost, the knot gave out, sending the trap plummeting. Peanut Butter and Jellyfish grabbed a hold and lowered it to safety. Krabby's legs wobbled as he returned to his favorite rock. The, the thanks you to do, he stuttered. You know, I'm sorry for saying those mean things, Krabby said. He may have been afraid of heights, but Krabby was brave enough to apologize. I guess I was jealous. You guys seem like you're always having so much fun exploring the open waters. Well, there's plenty to explore close to the ocean floor, said Jellyfish. Peanut Butter and Jellyfish still swim up, down, around, and through. But it was on the ocean floor that they found their greatest treasure. And then we see the same two fishermen on the back of their lobster boat, now without their lobster trap. So if we go back, you'll see that hidden throughout the book is, is that clam. And that's part of the story that you're only going to know if you read the pictures carefully. And that clam is, of course, clams don't have eyeballs like that. That would be super creepy. But I can take some liberties here with, with these cartoon characters. And that clam is reacting to everything that's happening. And of course, once they go up to the, the surface, you don't see that clam because he's just at the bottom. But there they are, once again. And also right there. Okay, so if you have some questions, uh, please uh, tweet me at Studio JJK. Uh, I will log on to Twitter in a little bit, and I'll take some more uh, uh, some more questions from you all and answer answer some. Um, there we go. There's my Twitter handle is Studio JJK. If you are tuning in via Facebook Live, which is on this camera. Uh, Facebook Live only has one camera. YouTube has a couple of other cameras. I have an app connected to my YouTube that makes it feel like more like a production. So if I'm catching you on Facebook, uh, you might want to jump over to uh, YouTube, uh, Studio JJK. And then everything that I make today is going to go on bidding uh, on eBay to raise funds for the Joseph and Shirley Art Scholarships at the Worcester Art Museum. And uh, kids in my hometown of Worcester can take classes free of charge uh, in memory of my grandparents. That's what we're doing there. My grandparents, Joe and Shirley, if you read Hey Kiddo, uh, you might have spent some time with them there. Okay, let me grab another piece of paper. And then I'm going to, I'm going to add some color to this one. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a little experimenting right now. And sometimes my palettes are just paper plates, quick and easy. Um, I'm gonna make a set of three things. I'm not sure what they're going to be yet. Um, 
And let me pick some colors. Pick a blue. I will pick a green. going to do is just a little exercise where I draw a bit of a blob on each picture and I'll let those blobs dry and then I'll see if I can't turn those blobs into some kind of picture see see what I might see what I might find blob. Let me Hey Sam, wouldn't you love to see my I have a you know, I have those little watercolor sets. If you happen to see it. Okay now I'll make a Blue blob. And then you know what, maybe if you are watching from a classroom, maybe you might be able to make some suggestions on what I can turn these blobs into. So if you have any suggestions on what I can turn these blobs into, I will take a few suggestions. And also please send in your questions and I will answer them. So I'm gonna put these aside now. I will let them dry. Uh, yeah, I'm not, 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 I'm not sure. Um, would you look maybe how my back of desk upstairs? Maybe we'll just put that there. Okay, so I'm going to draw another picture. This one I'm going to add some color to it. So um, let me get a pencil that's a hard pencil. Okay, H. Um, why don't I draw? I'll draw a pig again. This time I'll add some color. Make a little painting of this pig. Character's guitar. Everything seems to be falling off my desk because it's such an angle. I'm going to see if I can't move my desk up a little bit so it's a little flatter. That should be a recipe for a disaster, actually. That probably would be a disastrous thing because then everything's going to fall apart. You know what I'll do? I will tape my picture up so it doesn't fall. The reason why drafting tables are coming at an angle like this is so that, the, you know, the artist doesn't break their back hunching over. All right, so let me get organized some here. Let me get a, a red. Mm -hmm. 
this particular red is the uh, a red that I use for pig when making punk form, not this very tube. Um, but you know, all, all reds are very different from one another. I can never quite pronounce this one. It's it's spelled Q U I N A C R I D O N E. Quinacridone, quinacridon red. But I find that when I add white to this, it makes for a fantastic pig, especially for a pig. And if you have any requests on what you'd like to see me draw, please send in requests to me at Studio JJK, please. So pretty early on when I'm painting a character, I start thinking about, you know, some light and, and shadow. And I never use black from a tube. It's one of the very first things that they teach you in art school is in painting classes to not use uh, black from a tube, but to, to make your own uh, blacks and to create your own shadows using different colors. So I like to use cold colors like blues and purples. So I'm going to add a little purple to my paper plate here. And th these are what I'm using right now. These are acrylic paints. Acrylic dries very quickly. And it's a very thick paint. And the purple that I grabbed is all hardened up. I must not have used that particular tube of paint in a while, but I know I have purple here somewhere. Um, Sam, would you do me a favor? I think that uh, there might be a white box of, of paint somewhere. It was over there if you happen to see it. It's like in one of those plastic bins. And if you can't find it, that's okay. I will, I can use blue. I think I might have, a, it would be on its own. That's okay. Why don't I use, since I can't, I know I must have purple somewhere, but I don't want to belabor the point. I'll just add a little, a little blue to the mix here. So I think the last time I broke up these acrylic paints was when I was making my pumpkins and I had them all in like a, a white plastic bin. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. My studio is a bit of a mess right now. I have had a lot of travel this fall and I just finished an art deadline. 
whenever you finish an art deadline, everything, you know, when you're on an art de deadline, everything seems to fall by the wayside as you're trying to make your way. So, so I kind of, I made my own purple there, mi mixing the blue and the red together. And I'm going to use this as a little shadow underneath where the guitar would cast a shadow. I add some water to make that a little thinner. A little more translucent. Found the missing box of paint. Thank you. And likewise, just as I started thinking about um, the shadows early on, I'm going to also think about the highlights. So I'm going to add let me get some of that red right there, a little bit about that red. And a lot of that white. And I'm going to place it where I think there would be highlights on the characters, that little pig skin. And even though there's a shadow right here on the other side of the cheek, there would be a little bit of reflective light coming on on either side there. And I come up with, uh, add more white here. Now you gotta be careful with the white because it can make things look very chalky. When you're trying to make highlights, if I if this was a human character, I would not be using this white as a highlight. That would make the character look like like a plastic toy. All right, now I'm going to mix my own. Let me grab. Let me grab a stool here. I want to get a couple of specific colors to make my own black. This is the, the perfect recipe to make a perfect black. Let's see if I have the right colors here. Now I have these big bins of, of paints and I, I keep them, to, I just keep them organized by, um, warm or cold colors, which is probably more organization than, than most artists might have, but I also just have just piles and piles and piles of, of paints. Okay. Ah, here we go. This is exactly what I wanted. Thalo blue green shade. It's called, so Thalo is in P H T H A L O. Thalo blue green shade. And then cadmium red medium makes a beautiful, rich black. Sometimes I might use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, which, which makes a decent enough black. But this makes just such a perfect black color. It's 
very rich. And why don't I do this? Since this is a much longer picture, I mean, this picture's taking longer to make than just those quick um, sketches. Again, if you have any questions, send them to me via Studio JJK. And what we could do is, uh, my studio assistant Sam was right over here, uh, making sure everything is running properly, and she's putting up things on eBay. Uh, Sam, would you jump on my mentions and see if there are any any questions that I could answer while I while I. Do this, aside from my friend Jonathan X here. I mean, if Jonathan, Jonathan, if you have more questions, I'm happy to answer more questions from you. I just don't know if people are, are tuning in or not. And and Sam too, like throw, Sam, for the day you could like throw up links on that YouTube to remind people they can sign on and stuff. Like on Twitter and stuff like that, yeah. So you could just read them to me if they're... Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm not sure if this is one you answered earlier, uh, but Jonathan wants to know, how do you make this sort of animation where it captures your pen as you draw? Oh, okay, yes. That's, I'll answer that question again. So I draw sometimes on my iPad Pro. And so this is... Here, I'll show you again. This is what Jonathan was referencing. He's referencing this video. Uh, and so for this picture, I just I had a took a photograph of a um, of a sketchbook, and then on the iPad I drew that, and then it it does a time lapse video of that. You can you can export your drawings as a time lapse video. And if you're watching on if you're watching on Facebook, um, you can you can ask a question in the comments of the Facebook live feed as well. And we could we could check that out to see if people are are commenting or have any questions. But if you have any questions about my books, about any of my characters, about my process, about how I got published, I am here until three p.m. I have a lot of time to kill. I would be so happy to answer any questions y'all might have.
going to mix up a color for Pig's guitar. And give him a blue guitar. Okay, so if you are just tuning in, please, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer questions while I paint and draw today. You can, if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can comment under this video. If you're watching via YouTube, you may uh, send uh, tweets to me at Studio JJK, and I will be checking in throughout the day to answer any questions y'all might have. All right, let me get a and color. You know, that blue is still a little bit wet and so I keep a hair dryer on hand to speed along the process. In the video is live everywhere it's going okay. Now I'm going to add up some highlights and shadows to that guitar. OK, 
give it some form. Some depth right there. Now, Punk Farm was inspired in, in large part by watching my little brother and sister go play with their bands when they were teenagers. And they would play in these little VFWs uh, that were, you know, in the middle of the sticks. And they had this little ska punk band that they would play in called Heroes of the Time Warp Kitchen. And they had, that was a, such a fun band to go see a bunch of teenagers playing punk music and ska music and they had this amazing breakup anthem and it was that their breakup song was called it's always christmas time without you which i still th love and think of from time to time i wish i think i have a recording of it somewhere on some cd they cut it a, a cd at one point but uh what i'm getting at so the pig's guitar so it was I used photo reference of my, my little brother. He was probably 14, 15 at the time. I used photo reference of his guitar when designing uh, Pig's guitar for the book. Okay, so now that I have all of this colors down there, what you notice is that the highlights, and I've got so many different, when I, when I was just the pink, um, those highlights and, and shadows we're in sharp contrast to one another, but now that I have some darker darks, those highlights don't look as bright. So I'm going to come in and just pump up those highlights there. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm gonna start thinking about uh, the background now. I'm gonna, one thing about that, that particular color of pink, it looks really beautiful next to a, a light blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, going to draw a sky color behind the character. Maybe we'll we'll put this character out 
and a pastor. So let me get a clean paper plate. You didn't realize I was using such fancy materials here, did you? Okay. There's a light blue there, but that's still a pretty bright blue, so I'm going to add some white, soften it up. We just need a little bit of color to a lot of white. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, see how I just added just the tiniest bit of color. And I come right up to that color. And that's really starting to add a little bit of dimension and helping that, that character pop forward. Now, um, when you're studying color in art school, you know, one of the first things you learn there is that uh, warm colors will come forward in an image and cold colors will push back. So blue is a cold color and pink is a warm color, which is why you're getting this illusion too that that pink is popping forward. I didn't mix enough of that sky color. When you're mixing up a color, your biggest fear is you're always, if you run out and you have to try to figure out how you, the exact way that you mix that color. Especially tricky, see that's darker, man. Especially tricky when you are painting a picture book and you have to paint that character on every single page. So. What I, what I would tend to do, and I, I haven't done a full-on painted picture book in a while, and I hope to get back to doing one soon, is you lay out all of your artwork, and you can identify where the color is a bit off, and it helps us to mix that color, one big vat of that color, and uh, go over it over and over and over again on the different pieces. We'll leave a little, I'm not going to come all the way down, I'm going to add it some grass to, to give a, a ground, to ground the character, so the character's standing somewhere. Oh, and I forgot to paint the character's tail. Something that I actually often do forgetting to draw the character's tails. up a grass color. Throw down some yellow.
permanent sap green, which I haven't used this one in a while. It's pretty thin. Let's see if there's any paint left in here. Something's in there. Let's see. Nope, that's, that's way too hard. And I have not done a good job of weeding through my paints to see what is kicked and what still has paint left. Let me just, why is that? Oh, that one is done too. This one is a little bit too neonish for me, a little bit too, too bright. So I'm going to add some burnt sienna to it. Burnt sienna is a very warm brown color. Yellow there. It's not so dark. I might have to put in this a couple layers for this one. Using the side of the brush there, so on the horizon you see not a straight line, but a bit of some some brush strokes to make it look like grass. I'm going to take out my hair dryer once again. up. I'm going to get a, a smaller brush to create those uh, little blades of grass. Add a little bit of Naples yellow, brighten it up and thicken, thicken it up. Again, if you have any questions for me, I can answer questions while I work today. You can tweet them to me at Studio JJK. Or if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can just put them in the comment section. If 
And all of the pieces that I make today are going to be going up on eBay to benefit the Joseph and Shirley Krasowska Memorial Youth Art Scholarships at the Worcester Art Museum, which is a long name, but the Joe and Shirley Art Scholarships for short. I don't want to add too much white because white makes things look chalky, but I need to lighten that up some. There we go. Just going to add a little bit of a pattern here to make it look like grass. Probably what I'll do after is I'll probably put a. Uh, because that is looking very chalky to me, being that I. I added that white, so I might just do a wash of a green on top of it in order to make it look not so chalky. Getting close, we're almost done here. And I'm just going to add some water to this green here. So to glaze it over there. Brighten it up some. It doesn't read as as chalky. Add a little bit more life to that grass. Now I have to again, since I consider the light source on the character, I have to also consider the light source on the ground. So I want to create a shadow underneath that ground. So let me once again dry up that paint. And I'm going to go back to this this blackish color that I had painted earlier. I'm gonna go more on the blue side. So I have more blue than red. I'm gonna water it down. And you know, I'm going to get a test piece of paper. Yeah, see, that's way too dark. The problem, the, the tricky thing is when you're creating a shadow on the ground, you don't want it to make it look like a hole in the ground. So you don't want it to be too dark. some of that shadow color here. Now, I'm not happy with how crisp that line is right there, so I wanna, before that dries, get a dry brush. Just go over, I'm gonna add a little water. Soften that up.
Now to also help give dimension to that backdrop, I'm going to paint some clouds back there. Paint some smaller clouds that are far away. And some bigger clouds as they get closer. And have it be, uh, it's a sunny day, there's going to be, the top of the clouds will be brighter than the bottom of the clouds. You don't want to have it be there be too many clouds. You don't want to overcrowd it with overcrowd it with clouds. You gotta be careful with the design of the clouds that they don't come in and awkwardly touch the character. But then you want them to also be behind the character in some parts because it's not like the clouds are magically just not you know right behind the character. I don't think clouds are as tricky to place that they are. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Let me dry it off. and this is going to go up for bidding. Jared J. Zoska 2019. I'm going to add just a little bit of graphite to some of these pieces here. Well, you know what? One last, one last little pig highlight for that smirk. The tricky part is knowing when to be done. You could, you could spend your entire life on just one piece. like to win this and take this one home it is going to be up for art auction on ebay with all of the proceeds benefiting the joe and cheryl art scholarship so sam i'm gonna hand this to you to photograph and then uh you can find it on ebay uh in just a few minutes all right uh if you have any requests you may send them to me at studio jjk on twitter or if you are watching on Facebook Live, you may comment on the comment section of the Facebook video. I'm going to revisit these little blobs that I made and see if I couldn't turn them into something. <laughs> Let me get out 
Let me find my ink pen. Let's see. Okay. This is an ink brush, so yeah, okay. All the ink is loaded up in there and it comes right up to the brush. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this blue thing here. Let me see what I might turn this into. I see. Okay. It's always good to have a test piece of paper in case your ink explodes like that just did. See, I have a couple of different ideas for this one. Oh, you know what I see? I see a little balloon. But I'm going to make it a little happy balloon. Sign it with graphite here. Okay, simple enough. Happy balloon. That one will end up on eBay in just a little bit. Okay. Let's see what this blob might be. I see. A little monster. monster who is dressed for winter. I'm going to add, first I'm going to make sure I wipe my hands off so I don't get ink everywhere. I am going to add a little bit of extra color to this. Really just to, to accentuate those eyes. So, totally random. Come on, stir in winter.
All right, Sam, I'll hand this one over to you. You have to just be a little careful that that ink is still pretty wet. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, now let's see. Let's see what this orange blob could be. I see something. All right, I see something now. a hairdo. This will end up on eBay soon enough as well. And why don't I, that was fun. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna paint some more swatches. Some random shapes. We'll let that dry and we'll revisit those later on. Orange and I'll have to wash my brush. that green try something with that green Okay, so three random swatches. We will come back and revisit them later, see what we might find in them. And, okay, so uh, I take a moment to read another book to you, and then um, I will get going on another uh, piece of artwork, and I will perhaps take some questions while I'm making that artwork. Uh, why don't I read Naptastrophe? This is a book that was 
inspired by real life events uh, by my daughter uh, Lucia, who uh, was not wanting to nap much at all when she was a toddler. You know that white sliding door. And so every time she refused to nap, of course, if anyone who has a toddler would know, disaster would strike. Nap catastrophe. It seemed that nobody listened to Lucy when she said, I'm not tired. So she found herself in her room with the lights off during the daytime. There must have been a mistake. She yelled, I'm not tired. But nothing. Lucy thought of all the fun she was missing. She could be playing with her toys. Her toys probably missed her. What if they didn't? What if they were having a dance party without her? After an eternity, Lucy's bedroom door opened. I'm not tired, she said proudly. She hadn't slept, but now it was too late for nap time. She and her daddy needed to run errands. See, told you I wasn't tired. Lucy called her daddy on a banana. Not tired, she said, but he didn't answer his phone. Still not tired, Lucy shouted moments later. Not tired, not tired, not tired, not tired, not tired. Look, exclaimed Lucy, candy. We're not getting candy today, sweetheart, said her daddy. We'll just get a few, said Lucy. I said no, her daddy reminded her. And then it hit her. The light, the noise, her knees wobbled, her eyes drooped. Lucy could not hold it any longer. It was a catastrophe. Her arms flapped, her fists locked. She got stuck to the floor. It was time to go. At dinner, Lucy heard the word bedtime. She interrupted the grown-up talk to say, I'm not tired. Just before. Splat. Good night, Lucy. The end. So in the first, the very first draft of this book, this character was actually a human. But ultimately, I uh, decided to go with a bunny because, you know, when you have those, those two bunny ears, you know, if the character is excited, the bunny ears would go up. If the bunny is tired, those bunny ears would would droop down, which is which is why this character ended up becoming a, a bunny. So let me draw a sketch of Lucy from Naptastrophe for you. I'll get out my pencil again. Get a little 
sharpen it a little bit. Draw Lucy in happy, happy dance mode. And Lucy has a little stuffy that's a carrot. So again, once I have the loose sketch down, I'll come in and, you know, this is an H pencil. Let me get a, a pencil that has, it's a little softer. So it will make a darker line. go in and erase some of those lighter marks too to make it look like a cleaner this is my this is my favorite kind of eraser it's a kneaded eraser this one's brand new love the smell of a brand new kneaded eraser I can shape it any way I want go in there and get some of those marks out Naptastrophe is one of those picture books that I made post-parenthood. A lot of my picture books were actually made before I ever became a parent. And aside from the, the, the deeper understanding of what kids go through on their regular routines, I um, also learned as a parent that little kids, toddlers, they tend to be pretty pretty thick, you know, and pretty sturdy. When you think of how I drew my character from Goodnight Monkey Boy, it's pretty stringy. So if I were to create that character now, I'd give a little bit more, more girth to the character.
erase some of those letter marks here. shadows and I'm gonna add some colors in via some of these colored pencils here so if you have any questions uh, please do go ahead and ask them And it looks like, Sam, mm -hmm. that, uh, it looks like that was improperly plugged in. So that camera, um, could you, could you fiddle with that to see if you could get that to go back on? Sam, you could um, you could take it off, and then take the case off. So sometimes that um, the port is just fidget, is, is finicky. So I would I would bet that it's getting it's plugged in properly from the wall. Let me see for a second. Hold on one second, everybody. Okay, so um, okay, so it's getting a charge now. Um, so if you could just place it place it um, back in there, and then I'll have to set it back up again. Um, either way, Sam. Yeah, thanks. That was a fear of mine actually when I was starting this morning, but I forgot to address it.
will sign this one and put the year and Sam, I'm going to hand this over to you to throw up on eBay. So look for this soon over at, at eBay. Um, and Sam, do you know if that, did that camera go, go back on? You might have to turn it on on the, I have to give it some more power. One of our, one of our cameras went down, which is my phone, which wasn't totally plugged in. No, here, hold on one second. I'm just gonna take a brief moment to go and look at some other things and see if I can fix it. Hold on a second. I'm not even charging it. That's okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, okay, so now it's um so it's getting a charge. And then once it's once it's back up and running, I'll take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm uh coming back. piece of paper here. What I'd like to do is I'm going to draw another lunch lady, but this time I'm going to be adding some color to it. find my pencil my hard pencil here all right again I'm gonna start off with just some loose lines and a couple of shapes with that lunch lady character I start by drawing two teardrop shapes. And that's sort of what the character's pose is. The character's gonna be jumping through the air. Close. Facial expressions. And again, this is the point where it's going to be very easy for me uh, to make any changes that I might want to make. And I don't think there's a lot of... Um, of dynamics in this particular pose. So I'm going to erase that. There we go. And I'm not totally happy with that arm. There we go. Nice, nice fighting stance for that lunch lady character. What I'm gonna do this time, I'm going to lay down a, a ground color. A ground color is just a, just one color that you put down and you, uh, that will affect and improve 
all of the colors I put on top of it. So instead of just working off the white of the page, and I'm going to use a burnt sienna as the ground color. It's going to be very watered down. This way I can still see some of that drawing that I made there. So I'm going to need just the, some of this water and just the tiniest speck of that paint. Tape this really tape this down. I got a little bit of that blue paint on my blue tape. I don't want to get that blue paint all over my hands, but I do want to tape this down some. Okay, I'm going to dry that paint. Upstairs and just um, wash out all of these brushes for me. Thanks. Thank you. All right, I'm going to mix up some cadmium red medium with this Naples yellow to get her particular skin tone. Now, I don't normally paint the Lunch Lady character. I usually draw her with black ink, and then um, the coloring happens on the computer. So it's kind of a special thing here that I'm actually using acrylic paints to, to paint the Lunch Lady. There aren't many actual paintings of this character in existence. The only time I've ever, actually, the only time I've ever actually painted her uh, was, has been for um, charity auctions. And even though I haven't had a new Lunch Lady book published in a bunch of years, I still think about this character all the time and uh, young people are still reading the books. And, oh, once a week, I get the question if I'm wondering if I'm going to 
make more lunch lady books? And the answer is maybe. I'm I'm not not going to make new lunch lady books ever. I don't have any immediate plans to. All right, since I already had some blue on this paper plate palette, I'll draw use this for the blue of her blue jeans. black orthopedic shoes. She's on her feet all day cooking lunch for all those kids. Fighting the villains. Kicking those robots in the face. And if you have any questions throughout this webcast, you can tweet them to me. Or if you're watching on Facebook, you can comment underneath the video. We are on hour two of this sketchathon, which has become, I guess, more of an artathon, being now that I'm actually painting. And all of everything that I make today will end up on eBay. And it will benefit the Joseph and Shirley Krasowska Memorial Youth Art Scholarships at the Worcester Art Museum. Very long name, I know, but it encompasses everything that it does. Um, but the Joe and Shirley Art Scholarships, what, this, what these scholarships do is they allow kids who have limited financial means but are in unique familial situations. Maybe they're being raised like by their grandparents, like like I like I was raised by my grandparents, or an aunt or an uncle, and it allows them to take classes at the Worcester Art Museum completely free of charge. So they don't need to worry about the finances of it. They just get connected with the funds I raise through efforts like this, and they can take classes just like I did. Those classes meant everything to me when I was a kid. The Lunch Lady character was inspired by a chance encounter I had with my old Lunch Lady from when I was a kid. So I went to Gates Lane School in Worcester, Massachusetts. And it's this great public school that went kindergarten through eighth grade. It's a great way to grow up. You don't see too many schools now that go kindergarten through eighth grade, but wonderful community school that I walk to every single day. Walked with my buddy Pat, who lived next door to me. And we did not have a cafeteria. We had a kitchen. We ate in our lunchrooms. <clears throat> so the lunches had to be delivered to uh, the classrooms. And when I was in, when I was in the eighth grade, I got to be along with my buddy Pat, one of the. Uh, Two kids who would deliver lunches every day. So every day in the eighth grade, I got out of class 10 minutes early 
to go with Pat and to deliver all of the lunches and all of the cartons of milk for Jeannie and Betty, the actual lunch ladies. And, you know, eighth grade for me was 1991. Now, fast forward to the fall of 2001, and I was out of college for a couple of years, and I had my first picture book published, and I had returned to my old elementary school, Gates Lane, with my very first book, Good Night Monkey Boy, it had just published. And when I was there, I ran into Jeannie, my old lunch lady, she and Betty, we're still there now. The, the school had since been upgraded, and now there was a cafeteria. And I struck up a conversation with Jeannie, and she told me about her her grandkids, which really took me off guard because I had never thought about her life outside of school before. And that got me to thinking. Like that gave me the idea of writing a book about the secret lives of lunch ladies. And at first. This concept uh, was was going to be a picture book because you know my first picture book had just published I was wrapping up art on my second picture book which was called Baghead and so this was a picture book about kids who sat at their lunch table and debated what they thought their lunch lady did with herself and they all had these different ideas of what she might be up to but one of the characters thought that perhaps their lunch lady was a crime fighter. It was like this one-off joke on one page of the picture book. And that, I was really struck by that. I said, you know, that's more interesting than anything else I've written so far. So I said, let me, let me see if I could turn this concept into a story. And I very quickly re realized this it w wouldn't be a picture book. You know, a picture book is really short. And now the story was really getting super involved. And I thought, well, maybe it's a chapter book. It seemed like the next logical step. I started writing this out as a chapter book. But I just didn't feel like the right fit. Um, but it wasn't until I revisited some artwork that I made as a fifth grader. I revisited these comics I made as a fifth grader. And that's when I knew Lunch Lady needed to be a comic. Hold on one second. I'm going to dry this. And so um, I started developing Lunch Lady to be a graphic novel series, but this was to give you a perspective on how long ago this was. When I put together a pitch and sent the pitch to my publisher that was publishing all of my picture books, they I wrote about it on my MySpace blog. So I was, I remember writing on my MySpace blog that I had sent out this pitch for this story about a crime fighting lunch lady and it was a graphic novel. So this would have been 2004, 2005. And graphic novels for kids, you know, they weren't really a thing then. Um, not, certainly nothing like it they are now. And, you know, at first the publisher, they weren't, they weren't sure really what to do with it. Um, but eventually they, they signed on. And then the first Lunch Lady book was published in 2009. I should say the first two Lunch Lady books were published in 2009. The first two books came out on the same day. And my lunch ladies, Jeannie and Betty, attended the launch for the books at the Worcester Public Library. They were so tickled and thrilled by it that they were actually signing copies of the books themselves. And it was really nice to have them there and really nice to acknowledge them. And I did not mean for this character to look like my lunch lady, Jeannie. But it wasn't until I saw her at the book signings that it really hit me like, oh, wow. I didn't realize how much those real life 
people inspire these two characters. Of course, I did name Betty the character after Betty the person. And if you, if you go on a deep dive into the Lunch Lady mini comics and the Comic Squad books, you'll learn that this Lunch Lady's character's name is actually Janice. So I didn't, I didn't borrow from using that same name, Jeannie, uh, but I thought Janice was a nice tip of the hat to the actual Lunch Lady Jeannie. Now, painting with yellow is tricky. Yellow acrylic paints, they're very, very thin. So that's why I've added some other color. Like, like I added white, I added um, Naples yellow to, to make it a little thicker here. Now, usually when I'm in my art studio and I'm working, I'm listening to music or podcasts. Um, but, you know, since I'm broadcasting today, I don't want to break copyright law and air music that I don't own the rights to. Otherwise, you, if you ever to visit me in my art studio, you would be hearing a lot of music. Let me start thinking about adding some highlights into some of these pieces here.
Okay, now let me start thinking about adding some line work into here. Again, typically this is Lunch Lady is created using just line work. Using India ink and then colored in digitally. So this isn't something I've actually done a lot in the history of my having created this character. Be hard to have a steady hand when you're going to for some of the small details. This is why you see me sometimes put my other hand on top of this hand that's actually drawing everything. If you are just tuning in, uh, I am Jared Krasowska, and I'm the author and illustrator of a bunch of books, uh, one of them being uh, the Lunch Lady graphic novels, and I am drawing the hero of those books now. Today I am sketching in my art studio to raise money for scholarships that I have in memory of my grandparents, Joseph and Shirley, the Joe and Cheryl Art Scholarships raise money for this every single year in an effort to uh, connect kids in my hometown of Worcester to an arts education at the Worcester Art Museum. And regardless of what a young person does with their career, uh, having an education in the arts is so important to one's well-being, to one's uh, critical thinking skills, creative problem-solving skills. I'm going to dry this up. Now I want to just, I'm going to just fill up that background with a 
color and I would I'm gonna get a fresh palette. I saw a color in here earlier. Let's see if I can find it. My little bin of Here, you know what I should do? I'm going to I'm going to um this is my view. This is hello, everybody. I'm Jarrett. So this is what I see as I'm drawing today. So here is my desk. To the right of me is uh, I, I, I have some art supplies. And then to my left, I have more art supplies. I have coffee. I have juice. I have all of my paint right there. And I am looking specifically and of course, now I have all of these these palettes just <laughs> everywhere. Um, I had an aqua color. Oh, there it is, it's, uh, a turquoise. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my desk camera. Oh no, I didn't think of before. Oh no, and this is, part of it is dried up. I can tell there's paint in there. So I'm gonna have to really push but not, hmm. You know what, I think, so if you happen, happen to see a pair of scissors, I might be able to cut this. This is a, makes for a great aqua when you mix, mix this, this particular turquoise with white. And what I'd like to do is kind of have, you know, that, that um, if you look in that top drawer, there might be some exacto blades, Sam, of the uh, workbench, right there. The tan, the yeah. Um, it's got this. It makes for like this, like what you imagine like a 1950s kitchen uh, refrigerator to look like. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut this because I cannot get the top part off. I know that there's paint in there. And my white. And I want to get a nice little flat brush here. Sometimes when I, you know, when I have that underpainting, I like to keep some of it there for the line work there. You're right where the color meets the figure. So if you have any questions, uh, you can tweet them to me. I'd be happy to answer questions. Uh, Sam, my trusty studio assistant who's helping out today, will monitor my mentions and will let me know if you all have any questions. She is also, as I throughout the day as I'm making stuff, she is placing the artwork on eBay and all of the funds that we raise through that eBay auction will benefit the Joe and Cheryl Art Scholarships at the Worcester Art Museum. So we have a we have a two-part question 
Okay. Um, oh, the question came in. I'm happy to answer it. What does it say? Uh, so Anna wants to know, do you have any advice for adults trying to develop their art or drawing skills, but were never artistic as children? Oh, okay. So my mother-in-law, Joyce, has been taking painting classes. Uh, she did not grow up as an artist. She's not trained as an artist. She is a retired uh, a speech pathologist and a retired assistant principal for an elementary school. And she has been taking weekly painting classes and she has her artistic skills have sharpened and grown exponentially since she's been taking these weekly classes. So if you, you'd like to draw and you're not sure where to go next, I think it helps to take art classes. It's sort of like if you, you know, if you're saying you're going to go to the gym and you're never going to go to the gym, but if you have a personal trainer at the gym and you have someone there that's, that's, uh, expecting you to do your homework, you're going to go to the gym. And especially if you're paying for the class, you're going to go to the class. So, um, keep a sketchbook too. draw from life, draw through observation. So those have been my two big pieces of advice. For, for Anna. And you said there was a two-parter? Yeah, she uh, actually, it's an unrelated question, also from Anna. She wants to know if you could be a contestant on any reality TV show, which one would it be? Ah, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I like it. If I could be a contestant on any reality TV show, okay, so I, there's a show on Netflix that I love, and it's called Nailed It. I, I don't know if you've seen this, but it's, um, they take amateur bakers and they really set them up for failure because they give them these these tasks to bake these these pieces that are so elaborate and so the concept is you know the the, the end results are typically so bad um, so I don't know if I would want to be a contestant or if I would want to be a sympathetic judge. Um, because I love baking. I love trying to be creative with my kids' uh, birthday cakes. Um, and sometimes they're really cool. And sometimes uh, they fall a little bit short of expectations. So I, I, would, I, would, I would go for a nailed it. A little lunch lady fun fact actually debuting today. Uh, so I, I live here in Northampton, Massachusetts, and there's this great place in downtown Northampton called Local Burger. And I have worked with uh, Jeff there and I have designed the Lunch Lady Burger, which is available for a limited time. Uh, the sales for that actually benefit Reader to Reader, which is a nonprofit out here that gets uh, books to low income communities. So the Lunch Lady Burger is a cheeseburger with tater tots inside and ketchup. And on top of the cheeseburger are mac and cheese bacon nuggets, which uh, is pretty much what I think one would expect if you've read the Lunch Lady books from a signature Lunch Lady Burger. Pretty happy with this one.
Okay, so this this lunch lady drawing uh, is going to go up onto <laughs> up onto the eBay's. I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to hand this to Sam. Sam? Yes. Yes. So I made the mistake of not plugging this phone in properly. So this phone was acting as one of my um, cameras. So I'm using a, an app called Switcher Studio, which is a really fun. You kind of can, you can, you can have your different iOS devices become different cameras, but the plug on my phone has been just so finicky lately it's driving me nuts and I, sh I should have I should have double checked that it was actually receiving a charge before I started alas that's okay it's not the I purposely didn't make it at least the um, the camera being used for my desk all right let me um, let you know let's see if these some of these things have dried up all right, I'm gonna make some more funky uh, images using these. And I'm gonna switch over to just good old crayons. I have some crayons, I have some crepas. All right, now take a look at this from all angles. go. Just some kind of weird octopus monster creature. All right, I'm going to set that aside. That will end up on the, on the eBay. Uh, let's see what else we have here. I'll... Grab a different color. See, I'm going to make this a person. I see a face and I see that as the nose. So if I have it hold it this way, the character looks sad, like they're looking down. If I look at this way, it looks like the character is looking up. Um, I don't know if this color will. I don't like that color. Not dark enough. Let's see. See, this is like an elf character.
come in and add some white to the character's eyes. Careful if you are blowing, uh, you know, whatever eraser dust or crayon particles off of your piece. Make sure that you swallow first and you don't have a mouthful of spit because then when you blow on your piece, you'll end up spitting all over it. A little pro tip right there. kind of odd little elf character that old dude will end up on on eBay all right let's see what we got here A triangle shape you know what I know that we just made an elf maybe I just have holidays on my brain right now, but I'm going to turn this into another little elf character. Never hold your crayon too tight. <laughs> I do that all the time. But now, now I have two crayons. So that's nice. And here we have a little elfin character. Um, would you like to would you like to read a story or would you like to draw this out upstairs? Draw for a little bit. Okay. Alright, so I am I am going to take a very short break. I'm going to order Sam and I some lunch and Sam is going to come on over here to the drafting table and we'll be drawing some pictures for you as well. So I will be back in just a couple minutes. Um, are you, what are you? Uh, I'm honestly not hungry. Okay. So. If I get, if I just ordered like a, a pizza or pizza sounds perfect. Okay. I'll order a pizza. I'm on the way. Right. For Jarrett there for a few minutes. I have a partially finished drawing here. I'll work on that for a little bit. Do you want uh, pens? Uh, 
pencil for now. Okay, pencil. Okay, eraser. Okay, eraser is, two erasers are, one is there, and then right by your finger. You haven't needed a reason? Right there. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> and it's then, right here. <laughs> and then here are, uh, let me clear up some space for you. Here are some pencils. Oh, there's great. a sharpener and there's some ink. Beautiful. I will Thank be right back. Guys. I'm going to go order us some lunch. All right. Let me, uh, let me figure out what's what. Uh, i a pencil. Right now, this is just a sketch. Um, probably later, I'll put some ink over it. Uh, we'll see. So this chair is only gonna go away for a few minutes. I figured I work on this. You know what? I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna use a, uh, a mechanical pencil. I end up using mechanical pencils a lot, uh, just because they're handy. Uh, so I kind of got used to using them, but. Uh, it's typically better to use a different pencil, like one of the art pencils, just because they'll give you a lot more variation on how thick your line is or how dark your line is. But I just like it. I like I like drawing with mechanical pencils. So if that's what you like to do, then do it. Uh, so right now, what I'm drawing is uh, hmm, like a lady knight or like a warrior girl or something. I haven't really decided. She was gonna have a sword. I kind of changed it to a spear. She's got a shield going on here. She's got like flowing hair. <sighs> so let's see. I wanna start figuring out what she might look like. So I draw very differently from Jarrett. Uh, I spend a lot of time kind of making little squiggles and seeing what, kind of like feeling it out, seeing what's working and what's not. And I tend to use the eraser a lot. But everybody, everybody's got their thing. Everyone draws differently. Something I'd advise uh, when you're drawing is to stop sometimes and take a step back at least one step back sometimes it better take like three steps back because then you kind of take a take stock of the whole picture instead of just like I tend to hyper focus so I'll just like focus on this little area and I'll make it really good and then I step back and it doesn't fit so you always want to make sure that you're uh, double checking with the rest of your drawing that you're uh, that you're working on it as a whole and not just one little area. Alright, so definitely. Shoulders come in here. Hmm. So right now. I want to kind of position her arm, and right now this was just a placeholder. So I kind of have to think about how an arm looks when it's bending like that. Uh, so I'm going to kind of draw a little bit of squiggly, squiggly placeholder thing. Uh, I'm going to actually, you know what, I'm going to draw it as if the spear isn't there, and then I'll draw the spear over it. All of this uh, redrawing and erasing and stuff means that I work a lot, lot, lot slower than Jarrett does. I'm always impressed he works so fast. Hmm. Lot of decision making for, for 
for later, and later is now. So I think probably, probably she's got to have some pretty hefty boots. She's going to go tromping off in the wilderness. So I'm going to add a little bit of a squiggle here. Uh, because if you think about pants, when you bend your leg, kind of make some wrinkles there. Comes down. I have her standing on. Sitting on something. I don't know yet. This drawing's kind of chill. I don't really have a... I don't really have a direction, except that I wanted her to be cool. Got some boots there. And later, when I come back to the boots, I'll add laces. But for now, there's my laces placeholder. Alright, so now let's do the other leg. Her other leg is kind of, it's going back in space here. So I have to think about, so what does a leg look like when it's going back in space like that? Uh, sometimes if I'm doing a more serious drawing, I will take pictures of me or one of my friends or something doing this and then take a look like, okay, so what does a leg look like when you do that? And it's really helpful, but when I'm just sketching, I kind of just try to remember what it looks like. For sometimes I'll just get up out of off the desk and I will uh, <laughs> I will just pose and I'll try to feel what it looks like. Whatever works. However you get the job done. Okay, so this is a moment where I'm stepping back for a second. So our hip bones would be right here. Her knee comes back here. Hmm. Alright. So I'm starting to feel like her legs are her legs are looking good enough. That's not finished. But like I said, you don't want to get focused on one part of the drawing and make that perfect and then move on because sometimes you gotta, you gotta fix things and move things around. You never know what's gonna happen. Uh, so I like to just do a little here and then, okay, that looks good enough for now. Do a little here. Um, so I think that the shield, the shield right here is looking a little underdeveloped uh, in this shoulder area. Which one do I want to do? I'm going to do the shoulder area because that's a little, little bit more important for like the structure of her body. So, all right. So you got your torso here. So I'm thinking about when I'm drawing, I'm thinking about these as shapes, but I'm also thinking about it like how does it look in real life? So she's got, you've got your rib cage here, so it takes up room. And then her armpit, and then you have uh, your shoulder, your uh, arm fits into a socket here, so it kind of comes out a little. And because her arm is coming towards you, it should look like a little shorter than usual. I might be, I might need to redo that part some other moment, but right now that'll do. Okay, so, so we got her looking this way, I'm trying to figure out how the neck connects. There we go, that's looking okay. Uh, so we've got her shoulder and then her other shoulder is kind of behind a little bit. Cool, starting to look a little more solid than when we started. I'm gonna fill that out, uh, round that out a little. Uh, all right, shield. Let's figure out the shield. Uh, okay, so we imagine her arm. So her arm is coming through here, and when you have a shield, well, there's different kinds of shields, but for her shield, 
She has a type of shield where you put your arm in straps on the inside of it, uh, and then you can block. You can just raise your arm and it's attached to your arm and you just block. So I imagine that uh, her arm is here behind, kind of curving in, and I'll draw a little bit of it just to get a sense. Okay, so I'll erase what I did. And don't be afraid to erase, because uh, if you did it once, you can do it again. Circles are very hard to draw. This isn't just a circle. This is, I'm trying to draw it as if it exists in real life. So, kind of want it to come out to this point. So I'm trying to get the edges to look like they go back in space. Not sure how successful. Yeah, that's working. It's very sketchy right now. Uh, and I really like doing a lot of detail stuff. It's another reason why my drawing takes a lot longer. So uh, right now I'm just gonna put a placeholder, like magic runes or something, going around her shield. And then here's the center. I brought another drawing to uh, just try inking with, but we'll see. I might just end up sticking to this one. Alrighty, so we got our shields, uh, got our arm. Right now, the thing that's looking the least worked on, the spear and her hair. But I really like drawing hair, so I'm gonna work on the hair. All right, so to work on the hair, I also have to figure out what the skull structure is doing. Because when you think about hair, it moves around your head. Uh, and so you really can't draw the hair if you don't know what the head is doing. I mean, you can. You absolutely can. But it comes out better, I find. So her forehead's there. And her head kind of goes back in space here. Humans have really weird shaped heads. Uh, so it kind of goes back here, but I'm not going to draw that because it's going to be covered by hair. Uh, but I do need her forehead. Uh, all right, I don't need her ear yet. So I'll take away that. All right, I think I really like the blowing look of her hair. I'm going to erase that right now, though. Because that was just a placeholder. So I kind of want maybe a strand going across her face. I'm going to draw kind of experimental. I usually draw hair and then redraw it a lot because I kind of want to capture movement to it and if the movement's just not working then I gotta just try it again. All right, so part of this is not working and that part is this bang part because it's going down and everything else is blowing upwards. Let's try that again. or another thing that hair kind of goes around. Okay, so I'm liking the general shape of her hair, but I'm gonna come back and do more because I really like putting detail in, like I said, as much as, much as I can until Sarah comes back.
Next thing I'm going to do, I think, is her face a little bit. I kind of want her to look fierce. She's like looking out, looking out on the horizon. Maybe there's like a dragon or, an, you know, enemy, enemy troops are out there and she's going to go, she's going to go protect her friends. Uh, Whatever it is, she's not too happy about it. placeholder clues in too. There's something weird going on with her face and it's because I have her head kind of tilted back but I have her facial features going the other direction so I kind of gotta, gotta work on that all right sometimes it helps uh, when you're drawing a 3d object especially a face to the little marker so I know that it's curving so it's curving back in space so I'm going to put this line here and that helps me remember that her face isn't looking right at us. It's looking kind of out, out and up a little. with that line a little bit but I want to know that it's that it's pretty straight because you don't want to you don't want it to look too straight you want some variation Spears gonna be so you never get never get attached. They have to redraw it. Okay, so try to get on her. 
looking a little better than it was before. It was a little bit more like she's going back in space. Alrighty. So, let's put a little bit of rock or something here. She's standing on something. exactly what her clothes are doing around her neck. I'll give her that. Remember that's coming around. Around. I'm going to make maybe a button there. Maybe I'm going to fray that a little. Is a warrior. You don't want to, you don't want everything to be too perfect. Okay. So got some wrinkles maybe. jump in. Okay. I'm not <laughs> I'm not gonna finish this in uh in the next few minutes. Okay, then just a couple of minutes. I'll, I'll set this probably back. jump back into this uh later when you need a break. Sure. Uh, Sounds in a few hours. Sure. Make 
some decisions. Don't want to be too perfect. Oh, I liked when it came down here though. Yeah, I'm ready to jump back All in. All right. I've ordered our pizza. All right. This drawing, TBC, to be continued. <clears throat> All right. Time to figure out how oh, to get out of here. <laughs> Perfect. All right. I'm heading back to the chair. To make some more pieces for you. Hello everyone, I am back again. And uh, again, so if you are just tuning in, we are on hour three of the Sketchathon. And what we're doing here is we are drawing live all day long. Well, all day, all the school day, from 10, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And everything that we make today will be put up for auction on the eBay machine, and all of those proceeds will benefit the Joe and Cheryl Art Scholarships at the Worcester Art Museum. And if you are watching on Facebook, you're on this camera, and you only have that one camera, hello. Uh, you can ask questions via the Facebook comments. If you are uh, watching on YouTube, you have all of these different edits and things going on. Uh, but if you are watching on YouTube, you can ask me questions uh, via Twitter. That'll be the easiest way to ask questions. Um, I am going to grab another piece of paper here. And I feel like maybe I might need to loosen up a little bit after taking a short little break. Uh, and I'm gonna make a couple more pencil sketches for you and then get into some more stuff with color and here we go here we go we're on this right here okay so now what i'm going to do is i want to draw some of my characters from the jedi academy series i have just finished what will be the sixth book. So um, the, the series itself started with three books by the incredibly talented Jeffrey Brown. I was brought on to write a new story arc uh, in a new class. And then there was a enough interest in uh, the main character's sister to create uh, a trilogy based on her. And uh, I stayed on for this series of tr this, this trilogy, uh, but under the caveat that uh, we brought in my friend Amy Ignatow to help write them. So um, I outline the books, Amy fleshes out all of the dialogue and the prose, and then I go in and create all of the artwork. So the, the sixth book that I've created, so the ninth book overall, the last book in the Christina Starspeeder trilogy is called Jedi at Last. And that will be here in April, at the very, very end of April. So I'm gonna put these books aside here and I'm gonna grab my pencil and get to drawing for you. I'm going to draw the, the Star Speeder siblings. And Again, I start off with just some shapes. And what I'll do is I'm gonna draw them just very loosely. Get some, get my blood flowing again and just a little circles for their heads. And then sort of almost like a little teardrop shape for their bodies. Try to figure out where their arms and legs will go, what their the pose will be, I'm going for like a back-to-back -back lightsaber kind of vibe. And your 
we get some of those pencil marks. And okay, I forgot where there. Sometimes I make a little, you know, a plus sign. If you, if you think of, imagine putting a plus sign on a ball and how that would fall over over the ball. So I can sort out on what axis their eyes will go, and then on which axis their nose will go. Now, it's sort of tricky to fit Christina into pieces, into, into the setup, because I drew her with these, like, these cones, these, like, weird like hair hair cones and so it can be it can be tricky to to fit her into uh the layout of a scene So while I'm drawing, if you have any questions, uh, please ask away and Sam will be uploading some of this art onto eBay as well as monitoring my, my Twitter mentions and my Facebook comments to see if anyone has any questions and I'd be happy to answer them as I go. So because I'm a righty, when I, when I'm try, I try to do, if there's going to be a lot of heavy graphite, draw that to be on the left-hand side. So as I draw from left to right, I don't smear all of the graphite on this side. Same thing when it goes to, um, if I'm inking something with Indie ink, try to ink from left to right. Because then I'll end up getting ink all on my hand and it'll wreck the picture.
All right, so what, I, what I'd like to do now, so this sketch will go up on eBay. Um, I'm going to use this sketch and I'm going to combine it with that Yoda sketch to ink everything in using a light box. And I have a light box right here. I'm not exactly sure how this might look on video, but we shall find out. Um, hopefully it, Hopefully it won't be flashing too too much. Like I, it doesn't flash for me. I just don't know how it's going to look once it's filmed. So let me plug it in. And uh, Sam, may, may I have that sketch of, of Yoda, please? Absolutely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all three of these images into one. Yeah, that does look a little funky there on the video. I'll try to be quick about the inking, so. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna place him here. I'm gonna put some tape there so it'll all stay where it needs to go. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to use that sketch as a line work to ink in. And then I'm going to add some color. I'm put Yoda here. So this is what I do sometimes for the finished art for books. Not always, but I've been doing it more increasingly where I sketch everything out using graphite and then place it on top of this light box. So it looks like in the video, what I'm seeing on my iPad is that there seems to be a, a, a constant motion. I'm not seeing that in real life. I think that would, yeah, that would drive me nuts if I saw that in real life. I'm just seeing a big old pan of, of just, just white light. side all right here's that Yoda sketch and now I'll put Victor and Christina behind him I 
need a little bit more ink in my brush pen. Hold on one second. Let's see if I can do this without making a total mess. Unlikely. I'm going to switch and use an ink palette. That ink is looking awfully watery. Let me try a different brand. See how watery that one? You might not be able to see on the video, but in here in person, I'm not happy with how that ink looks. Let's see. What other inks do I have here? much darker. Huge difference. And if you have any questions while well, I am drawn, please go ahead and either ask them via Twitter or Facebook comments.
side. All right, so now we have two pieces here. We have a sketch of the Star Speeder siblings together. Sam, I'm going to pass this off to you to throw up on eBay, please. And then now I have this ink drawing here that I'm going to add a little bit of color to. So I'm going to move my light box aside. I will take this here. And I will I would bet some of the ink is still wet, so I will take out my hair dryer. Stay hydrated. All right, now I would typically add watercolors, but just before I started this morning, I just couldn't find my watercolor set. It's somewhere in this mess of the studio of mine. As I mentioned earlier, I just finished an art deadline. And when you're on an art deadline, you don't have time to keep a clean studio. So since I would want to use watercolors instead, I'm just going to water down these acrylic paints. And that'll work just as well for what I'm doing, which is just adding a little bit of color here. And in fact, if I, you know what, some of this ink is probably still it would, would bleed so much if I had too much water. You, and that, that's what would happen with watercolors. So this, this works out just fine. anything I have a burnt sienna somewhere oh I had some right there on that same paper plate
brush to put in some of wider swatches of color. Happy with that Yoda. Let me add some color to Christina's robes. So we actually only have about an hour and 20 minutes left of this sketchathon, which is wild because I, I do feel like we just we're getting just started. So if you have any requests for anything that you might want me to draw, be it one of my characters, um, please uh, let me know by uh, commenting on the Facebook video or. Um, Tweeting, tweeting at me, and I will take a we will take a look at those mentions and see what you all want me to draw. In the time we have left. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sometimes you put down a color that might be too dark. You can dry off your brush and try to suck up some of that pigment with a dry brush. I wasn't happy with how dark Victor's forehead was right there. Or this cheek. Now to help breathe life into a character, just give a little bit of a wash of a red pigment. You put it right there in the character's cheek. I'm going to dry this paint so I can add a layer of shadow on top of everything. Now, to help tie it all together, I want, I'm going to put a, a blue shadow, a light blue shadow throughout, and that will, will tie, it up, tie all these separate pieces together to feel like one cohesive world, one cohesive piece. Um, I'm gonna find like a dark blue, I don't know what blue will do. I'm just gonna the tiniest little dab there. I'm gonna really water that down. I'm gonna put a shadow underneath these characters.
pretty happy with the way that's looking. Um, now the fun part is their their lightsabers, and let's see. Victor has a blue lightsaber, so I'm going to start with this blue color here. I'm going to get myself a fresh brush. Let me see if I can find a nice round brush for that saber. See, now you know what? I'm gonna use. I'm gonna clean off this one. I like the shape of this brush. Mm. Helps to make the sound of a saber. In there. Mm. When I am making the art for these books, I actually listen to the score by John Williams and I also have a collection of remixes and funky versions of, of Star Wars music. I created a, a Spotify playlist. Let me dry that up. Sam, I think that might be the pizza. I hear, I hear the dogs barking. That tells me the pizza is here, or someone's at the door. So it's all, it's all taken care of. Alrighty. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. So there's Victor Saber, and then Christina has a yellow saber. And if, remember, if you've been tuning in this whole time, I me earlier talk about how thin yellow acrylic paint is. So I mix it in with uh, Naples yellow, maybe a little bit of white to thicken it up some. I'm going to take this off. Victor and Christina Starspeeder and Yoda. Uh, oh, you know, I should sign this for sure. I had so much fun making these Jedi Academy books. The one that's coming out in April is my final Jedi Academy book. I decided to sign on for one more trilogy, uh, but then from there would take a step back to focus on my own work. Um, so you will be able to find this on eBay very soon. All right, let me get out some more paper. So we have, and we have just about an hour left for the sketchathon, um, and in that in this next hour, I'll create 
so some more pieces of art that will all uh, go up for bidding. Again, if you are looking to bid on any of the pieces that I'm making today, uh, you may find them on eBay. Here's the, the, the link that you would send. Well, I guess you can't link, click on that on the screen, but that is how you get to, to my eBay page. And uh, Sam has been very busy all day uh, taking the art that I make and then throwing them right up on eBay. Uh, if you have any questions for me, uh, please uh, send them to me via Twitter or if you're watching on Facebook, you can comment on the Facebook there. Facebook comments. Okay, so... Actually, I want this to be the other way around. Hold on. Solo... This and then this. Okay. Um, what should I draw now? Um, think for, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a little piece of I'm gonna make some fan art. Um, I have some books here to the side. Let's see if I could find some. Where's that the pizza? Okay, sounds good. So I am such a huge fan of. Uh, Dave Pilkey's Captain Underpants and his new book, Dog Man. Oh, I think I have Dog Man here too. Um, so I will create uh, a piece of fan art uh, inspired by my pal Dave Pilkey's two creations here. And if you have any questions, um, Sam will grab them off of the mentions and we'll go from there. I'm going to go this way. Go horizontal on this one. All right. I'm loving the Captain Underpants Netflix show. Have you seen any episodes, Sam? No, oh, I haven't. It's so good. I'll have to check it out. The movie's awesome, too. And I actually learned how to draw as a kid by taking some of my favorite cartoon characters, which were Snoopy and Garfield, and and I would set my books up like just like they am now, and draw them and figure out how Jim Davis and uh, Charles Schultz drew those characters. Same thing with all of those uh, superheroes. I would. Um, read about in my comics like Batman and uh, Spider-Man and X-Men. Those, those are always my, my go-to ones. Let me get out a brush. I'll create, I'll create a little line work here. Let's see how thin. This is a very thin brush. I'm going to go with this one. If you have any request on what you'd like for me to draw, please make some suggestions. And Sam, please let me know if there are any questions that people might have. We could strike up a conversation in this final hour of the Sketchathon.
my initials there. And I'm going to write parentheses with apologies to my pal Dave. Okay. Um, dry that off. I'm going to dry that out, the ink, and then I'm going to add a little shading to it. I'm not going to color it in, but I'll add some shading. Here. Now this is where I have to be really careful not to smear the ink. Usually when I am drawing my comics and I might draw and then ink right on top. I'm using a special pencil called non-photo blue. It's a special shade of blue that the computer can't register when it's going into scanning the artwork. going to put in some some shades of gray in there And what we'll do with this one, Sam, uh, if you could, you could prepare the eBay auction for it. Um, but before you hit publish, let me just get permission from, from Dave before I go and sell art that is based on his intellectual property. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to do that without someone's permission. It's one thing to just make something for the fun of it. It's an entirely different thing to try to make money off of someone else's ideas. But assuming Dave will be cool with it, because it's for a charity. It's not to build a, a pool in my backyard. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I'm actually pretty pretty happy with this. This is my first time attempting to draw Dogman and Captain Underpants. I can see why Dave has so much fun making these books. All right, so this one, look later today, it might end up on eBay if I can get a hold of my buddy Dave to get his permission. That over to you, Sam. Let me take out another piece of paper here. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what? I did draw a platypus police squad. Let me draw a little platypus police squad action. Let me see if I have those books right here. I have some of them here. So I also have a series of books, chapter books called Platypus Police Squad. It's about these, these platypuses that are cops. Um, so I'll make a quick little, little sketch of them for you. And again, I always start off by drawing just a couple of shapes. So I draw a big tall shape like that and a short squat shape like that. And I always make sure that one shape is a certain amount taller than the other. And I figure out where their arms and legs go. Here, so I'll just make those quick loose sketch. I won't draw too many details. And then I'll ink this in. Where did I put that brush I just had for inking? That's not it. That's not it. I don't think this one's it, but it will do. Oh, I think that phone, I think that one died again. You couldn't just um like like push it in some so it would get a, a little bit of a charge. I'll do my best. Yeah, no, I'm not worried about it. we can I don't need it. That's okay. That's okay. So this is Detective 
Rick Zango, who in the book is on his first day on the squad. He's super excited and very much over eager. And he gets partnered up with this grizzled old timer named Corey O'Malley, who just has no patience for this young rookie platypus cop. And I started um, thinking about uh, Platypus Police Squad. It was the early 2000s, and it was initially called Penguin Police Squad. And it was a similar dynamic of these, these two main characters. But it, uh, it didn't go anywhere because uh, suddenly there were penguins everywhere in the media. You know, there were, there's a big documentary called March of the Penguins that was released and several animated movies starring penguins. I mean, they were, they were, these penguins were surfing, they were tap dancing, they were the breakout stars of other movies where they were spies, they got their own, their own spin-off movies. And, you know, there were just so many penguin characters in, in the media that my manager said, look, penguins are done right now. Penguins are done in this time. Nobody wants another penguin story. And um, I was kind of sad about that at first because I'd spent some time working on the story and the characters and the design. And, uh, you know, I took a step back and I said, well, what is it that I really love? about uh, the concept was that uh, they were unlikely action heroes, goofy animals, and I like the way Penguin Police sounded. You know, I love, big fan of alliteration. You know, alliteration is when two words start with the same sound. And so Penguin Police Squad became Platypus Police Squad. I continued to work on it for a number of years, and then eventually this book started getting published. All right, I'm gonna dry this ink up. Some marks here. Let me add a little bit of grayscale. Throw a little shadow underneath the characters.
right, and here is uh, Platypus Police Squad. It will be up on eBay very soon. You could look at this right there. It's ebay.com forward slash USR Studio JJK. All right, here you go, Sam. Thank you so much. All right, we are in the final stretch of the Sketchathon. We have just under 40 minutes left. If there's any requests out there, if there are any requests out there, please send them now. You can send in any requests to me via Twitter, or you could also, uh, if you're on, if you're watching on Facebook Live, you could comment um, on there, and I will happily answer your questions. Again, everything uh, that I'm making here today will go up for bidding and will benefit the Joseph and Shirley Art Scholarships at the Worcester Art Museum. How do I draw? I'll make a drawing of all of punk form. I drew pig earlier. I will make a drawing of the entire band. And let's see, I'll start with the drum kit back here. Pig singing. Up here. I'll put pig and his guitar here. A lot of moving parts to when I'm drawing the whole band. on her keyboards. Now you don't typically see keyboards in punk I suppose but I just love the idea of a bird especially a chicken on keys and I imagine that getting really into pecking at the keys and then a goat on the bass guitar I just make these quick loose marks and I keep it light to make sure I could fit it all on the page there. And I'm going to make this one a pencil drawing. And I'm going to get out a, a softer, a pencil with softer lead, which means it'll be a darker line.
All right, so here is a pencil drawing of Punk Farm. And in just a few moments, this one will be up on the old eBay too. So if you would like to take this home, you could visit ebay.com forward slash usr forward slash studio jjk. That's where you're going to see all of the artwork that I have made today in this sketch -thon. And it, we have about 20 minutes left. We're, we're down to the wire. We're almost done with five hours of, of live drawing here. And you know, I drew Lunch Lady earlier, but I did not draw her trusty sidekick, Betty. So I will, I will, I will draw Betty now. With Betty, first thing I do is I draw a circle, and then I draw a bell shape, and that will become her head and body. And then I figure out where the characters. arms and legs will go. And where the character's facial features will go. Some of these pencil marks here. And for this Betty drawing, what I will do is I will ink it in. So just like you would see in the book. Now when I'm drawing the final art for, for these comics, draw with a brush because you get a very dynamic line when you draw with a brush. Apply a lot of pressure. That line will be thick. You apply just the slightest bit of pressure. That line will be thin. And with just a flick of your wrist, that line will go from thick to thin. When I go to scan in the artwork, all of those pencil markings don't make it into the scan, therefore they don't make it into the finished book. And the reason why is because I use this special pencil called Non-Photo Blue when I'm creating the font art for my books. Today, what just now you saw me use a graphite pencil. This is what a Non-Photo Blue pencil looks like. It's a regular pencil. It's a special shade of blue that the computer cannot register when I scan the artwork in at black and white. But he is a very fun character to draw and to write for.
going to dry up that ink with my hairdryer. some of these pencil marks and then Betty will make her way over to eBay as well. I add just a little bit of a little bit of grayscale to this. Oops, that wasn't fully dry right there. It's okay. We'll go with it. planning on adding color but let me just throw on a spot of yellow for Betty's apron and after that I'll probably just have time to do one more picture because we are just at the end of the sketchathon for 2019 I kind of really like the look of this painted limited color. All 
right and there we have Betty she will end up on eBay in just a couple of minutes you can find her there again so this is the final stretch um, let me put on to okay let's see all right so again hello my name is Jarrett, and uh, you have been watching my live stream uh, for almost five hours now. I've been going on, uh, sitting here at my desk, and painting, and drawing, and I'm going to make one more picture in the time that we have together. And now I feel all sorts of pressure. I don't know what I'm going to draw. I'm trying to think if there are any characters in mind that I didn't draw that you might be interested in. Um, gosh, I am totally drawing a blank. You know what? Okay. I'm hearing the sounds of my dogs upstairs barking. So I will, I will draw a pug. In fact, uh, the way in which I draw Yoda is inspired by how I draw my pugs. I have two pugs. Their names are Ralph and Frank. And Ralph is fawn, meaning that he is um, he has a he's tan with a black mask. And Frankie is a black pug. And they make quite the interesting pair, those two. Very territorial. Bark at anything that's walking by the house. the pitter patter of their little feet upstairs. And Ralph is going to be 13 years old. I tell you, he has become so persnickety, especially when it comes to eating. He's very demanding of his food. He's, he's gained so much weight because he has arthritis now in his little paws. And he's basically a giant baked potato with like little pretzel sticks for legs. Now, for the past couple of years, I've been able to open up an Etsy shop where I would draw people's pets or kids. I did not, unfortunately, did not able to, I did not have time in my schedule to open that up for this year, uh, for, um, for Christmas. I don't like the way that looks, the little tail. Um, but with any luck, maybe I'll be able to uh, open it up for um, maybe maybe Mother's and Father's Day. We'll see. I'll have to I'll have to see what my schedule looks like. Should be a little closer to those dates.
I'm just gonna make a little ink wash. For this dog's, this pug's mask. Sign my name here. Alright, and that pug will this pug will end up on the eBay as well. So there we are. I want to thank Sam. Thank you, Sam, so much for all of your help today. And again, my name is Jared, and you've been watching my Sketchathon. This is all to benefit the Joseph and Charlie Krasowska Memorial Youth Art Scholarships at the Worcester Art Museum. So we're going to connect kids in Worcester to take art classes for free. Please bid. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next year. Well, I'll also be doing these webcasts hopefully maybe about once a month. They won't be five hours long, though. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for another time. Until then.